I want to talk about Jupiter. So the gas giants. Saturn also actually uh, plays a part in this too, but I'm going to focus on Jupiter. Um, I saw this post from James O'Donohue, and I was really excited because he posted this, and I was like, oh, snaps. It was I saw it like, I don't know, an hour after he posted it, and I was like all giddy. Like, what is he going to post? What is he going to post? And it's pretty cool what he found out. In three hours, our exciting new discovery at Jupiter will be published. I'll be dropping a thread, sharing a new animation and image. Press releases, which explain more, will also be coming out of NASA. All right, so I have that article from NASA, but really it's this. Okay, this is um, the I, this is from him. This is basically what his finding is: global upper atmospheric heating on Jupiter by the polar aurora. All right, so. Essentially what it is, well, you know what, I'm just going to read it because it's really awesome, all right? Observatories assemble NASA's Juno spacecraft joins Japan's Hisaki satellite and WM Keck observatory to solve energy crisis on Jupiter. Sitting more than five times the distance from the sun as Earth, Jupiter is not expected to be particularly warm. Based on the amount of sunlight received, the average temperature in the planet's upper atmosphere should be about minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit or a chilly minus 73 Celsius. Instead, the measured value soared to around 800 degrees Fahrenheit or 426 degrees Celsius. So the source of this extra heat has remained elusive for 50 years, causing scientists to refer to the discrepancy as an energy crisis for the planet. Recently, an international team assembled observers from a trio of observatories, NASA's Juno spacecraft, the Hisaki satellite from uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, and Keck Observatory in Mauna, Mauna Kea on Hawaii to discover the likely source of Jupiter's thermal boost. We found that Jupiter, Jupiter's intense aurora the most powerful in the solar system, is responsible for heating the entire planet's upper atmosphere to surprisingly to high temperatures, says James O'Donohue of JAXA's Institute of Space and uh, Astronautical Space Sagihara, Japan. O'Donohue began research while at NASA's Goddard Flight Space, Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, which I've actually driven through, and is a lead author of a paper about this research appearing in Nature, August 4th. Now, that's actually what I just uh, referenced earlier. And this, this is actually really beautiful, but I'm going to come back to that. Jupiter uh, auroras occur when electrically charged particles are caught in the planet's magnetic field. These spiral along invisible lines of force in the magnetic field towards the planet's magnetic poles, striking atoms and molecules in the atmosphere to release light and energy. On Earth, this leads to the colorful light show that forms the Aurora Borealis and the Austral Austral Australis, also known as the Northern and Southern Lights. At Jupiter, material erupting from the volcanic moon Io leads to the most powerful aurora in the solar system and enormous heating in upper atmosphere over the polar regions of the planet. The idea that the aurora uh, could be the source of Jupiter's mysterious energy had been proposed previously, but observations have been unable to confirm or deny until now. Global models of Jupiter's upper atmosphere suggested that winds heated by the aurora and headed to the uh, equator would be overwhelmed and redirected by westward winds driven by the planet's rapid rotation. Jupiter rotates um, once every 10 hours. So for us, in 10 hours from now, it will have gone around one full time. Now, keep in mind, Jupiter is massive, okay? So if Jupiter is this big, Earth is like a golf ball compared to like a basketball, all right? It's huge. Jupiter's massive. All right, that's a roundabout anyway. Okay, so high resolution temperature maps from Keck 2, combined with the magnetic field data from Hisaki and Juno, allowed the team to catch the aurora in the act of sending what appears to be a pulse of heat towards Jupiter's equator. The team observed Jupiter with the Keck 2 telescope from for five hours on two separate nights on April 2016 and January 2017, 
using the near-infrared spectrometer on Keck 2 heat from the electronically charged hydrogen molecules in Jupiter's atmosphere was traced from the planet's poles down to the equator. Previous maps of the upper atmosphere temperature were formed using images consisting of only several pixels. That's not enough resolution to see how the temperature might be changing across the planet, providing few clues as to the origin of the extra heat. To improve the situation, the team utilized the power of the Keck 2 to take many more temperature measurements across the face of the planet, and only included measurements with uncertainty in the recorded value of less than 5%. This took years of careful work and yielded temperature maps of over 10,000 individual data points and the highest resolution to date. Instead of high temperatures only in the polar regions near the aurora, which would have been expected if the heat was trapped there, these detailed maps show that the heat in the upper atmosphere was more widely distributed, with a gradual decrease in temperature closer to the equator. We also reviewed a strange localized region of heating well away from the aurora. A long bar of heating unlike anything else we've seen before, said Tom Stollard, a co-author of the paper at the University of uh, Leicester, Leicester, United Kingdom. Though we can't be sure what this feature is, I am convinced it's a rolling wave of heat flowing equator, equatorward from the aurora. Additionally, observations from JAXA Hicks Hisaki satellite showed that conditions at the time of the Keck 2 temperature observ observations could generate a strong aurora on Jupiter. From orbit around Earth, Hisaki has observed the aurora generating magnetic field around Jupiter since the mission's launch in 2013. This long-term monitoring has revealed that Jupiter's magnetic field is strongly influenced by solar wind, a stream of high-energy particles that emanates from the sun. The solar wind carries its own magnetic field, and when this meets Jupiter's planetary field, the latter is compressed. At the time of the Keck 2 observations, Hisaki showed that pressure from the solar winds was particularly high at Jupiter, and the field compression is likely to have created an enhanced aurora. And here is a, an image of that, which is actually rather beautiful. Finally, observations from Juno in orbit around Jupiter provide uh, the precise location of the aurora on the planet. Juno's magnetic field data provided us with a ground truth as to where the aurora was. This information isn't readily available from heat maps, as heat leaks away in many directions, says O'Donohue. Picture this like a beach. If the hot atmosphere is water, the magnetic field mapped by Juno is the shoreline, and the aurora is ocean, we found that water left ocean and flooded the land, and Juno revealed where the shoreline was to help us understand the degree of flooding. It was pure luck that we captured this potential heat shedding event, says O'Donohue. If we'd observed Jupiter in a different night when we, uh, solar wind pressure had not recently been high, we would have missed it. The research was funded by NASA, and this is just all the, uh, the fun stuff. I want to show you guys this beautiful aurora image. All right, so this is can I full screen this? Yeah. So this is where they change it. This is visible light. Okay, now they're gonna change it in a second. You guys can see this, right? Yeah. So now this is plus infrared. Now you can see the aurora on the, the northern hemisphere and the, and the southern, but you really see it here on the northern side. And you can see that these global winds are pushing it towards the, the equator. And that is hot, hot, hot too, you can see. I mean, it is 200 degrees Celsius around the equator, and that's a thousand kilometers above Jupiter's clouds. All right, so that is amazing. Now, actually, James has, let me see it. Hold on. He's got even more. Oh, he's been talking about SpaceX coming. Where is that thread that he has about a bunch of really cool ones? I think this might be it. So there's that one. Okay, here, this shows the size of Earth. This Actually, this might even be uh, uh, even smaller compared to Jupiter. I said golf ball compared to a basketball. I think that is more like, I don't know, a quarter to a basketball, right? A little smaller. Anyway, that's crazy. Earth has a diameter of 12,756 kilometers 
where Jupiter has a diameter of 142,984 kilometers. That's a big difference. Okay, this is another really dope one. This is, we observe the upper atmosphere, which is 700 kilometers above the cloud tops that you see in visible images. The aurora occur in this region at the poles and constantly emit bright lights. They look like this in ultraviolet. So this is the aurora, northern aurora of Jupiter in ultraviolet. Look at that, it's beautiful. I love that, this is amazing. Come on. There we go. And then what's this last one? Oh, okay. He just keeps talking about it a little bit. Uh, very cool. Uh, James, Do Dr. James O'Donohue. Awesome work. This is very cool. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty amazing that, you know, it basically it's heating up its, its self. Now he actually tweeted, uh, uh, later on, he said, Jupiter is not a failed star. It's an exceptional planet or something along the Jupiter is not a failed star. It's a highly successful dwarf planet. <laughs> Hashtag optimism. I like this guy. I've been following him for a while. I don't know if you know this about me, um, but I really like space and space related things. Um, so I was pretty excited when he, he revealed this information. It's kind of cool.